just well, everyone not describes doing it that. the same way. Even back in the fifties and sixties, it was all described as similar types of things that would disappear or shoot off. Yes. That, that doesn't seem physically possible. But now, what's so weird about it now? Why are like former CIA directors like Brennan, Woolsey, even Obama has like made the like a joke about like yes, we don't know what these things are. What do you think it is? Why is the intelligence community coming out and actually like putting their stamp of approval on this when for the last 70 years it's been so under the radar they you know they've been putting this under wraps but now they're kind of toying with the idea like we actually don't know what these are and then they also say we know that they're not from our military so they're hinting toward adversaries right China Russia with the hypersonic weapons technology that they're claiming that they can develop weapons five to and then they also say, we know that they're not from our military. So they're hinting toward adversaries, right? China, Russia with the hypersonic weapons technology that they're claiming that they can develop weapons five to ten times the speed of sound. Yeah. And I don't know what that looks like when you apply it, but that's strange to me that you see this rollout in the mainstream media talking about this now with the disclosures that the Pentagon has put out. Now, you are a cynical person, especially when it comes to the U.S. military and the intelligence agencies. What's your perspective? Like, I'm sure you're not just saying, oh, well, they're looking out for us. Yeah. They want us to know about these uh, amazing things. Like, what's your cynical perspective? Well, when I look at these things, a lot of these people, I believe these people. And especially watching that documentary, Joe, it was a real mind fuck. And a lot of this is bone chilling because I believe, especially when 62 people see something or people, 200 people in Melbourne, Australia, or all of these high level military people who you could tell are scared shitless recounting what they saw. I believe them. I really do because it, it's hard to act, right? But um, I, my mind tends to go toward what is physically possible? Is it a uh, mass hallucinations? Is it some sort of DMT weapon that can elicit some sort of mass hallucination where people are um, susceptible to a, a delusional mindset and told something like you just said? Is it the hypersonic weapons technology? Is it something that is a drone being projected holographically? Is it something that we can explain by, uh, you know, the realm of quantum physics that we actually don't understand, like like the Schrodinger's cat phenomenon. Like, is there something that is within the realm of physics, but we don't understand and can't comprehend it yet? So that's where my mind goes in terms of what is it? If it is something from another planet, is it holographically like projected onto us? You know, is that is that what's happening? But in terms of the intelligence community and people like Marco Rubio with that PBS special that came out, or the 60 minute special and Marco Rubio at the end of it is just like, we don't know what these are, man. They, <laughs> they might not be from our planet. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like one of the most hardcore neoconservatives yeah. is going out there and, and cutely toying with the idea that this could be from another world. And knowing that this has been so under wraps that whatever is happening, and I believe something is happening has been completely censored and covered up by our government. But now they're coming out and saying, it's okay to talk about this. This is no longer some fringe, kooky conspiracy theory. This is happening. Of course, the cynic in me goes to what better way to kind of pull on our deep-seated psychological fears of something that we can't explain, this kind of supernatural element to whatever is going on. Going back to the 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 UFO lore of everything from X-Files, something that I grew up on, you know, the abyss, like this notion that if there's something greater than our government and our technological capabilities, then we need to kind of like just acquiesce toward our institutions to be like, you just do whatever you need to do, whether that be militarizing space, like these things are a threat just because they exist and we don't know what they are. So, so my mind goes to there's a reason why this rollout is happening and it's not for the betterment of humanity and it's not because of the curiosity of these officials in terms of learning or wanting to find out what UFOs are. It's about, going back to what I said before, it's about militarization and, and you know, Space Force was basically part of the neocon blueprint back from PNAC, the Bush administration, and Trump fulfilled that dream. All right, Shalom. This is Harawan Banyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Ka Halayim, La Yahweh, Pa Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Pa Hashem, Ma'amah. Double honor to the elder, double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwathim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth. 
around the four corners of the earth. Yeah, I was watching this um this video with Joe was it the Joe Rogan experience and um he just won't let up on this topic about the chariots, man. But Esau Esau um caused UFOs, all right? Now they said a whole bunch in this interview. And you know, uh, a lot of these Edomites they take a long time getting to their damn point. You know what I mean? They use a lot of fucking words. Just get to one point. Or they or they'd be talking for about twenty minutes just just to tell you they don't they don't know what the hell is going on. You know? Or they they'll exhaust every aspect or every um scenario. Instead of just saying, yo, this is what it is. <laughs> It, it question things, you know what I mean? And in, in theory or you know. Well, uh there is no conspiracy theory, it's just the truth. All right, that uh is no longer conspiracy anymore. What it is, um now there is a group of people who are out there conspiring, yeah. But it's no longer theory. All right, it's 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 a it's a uh it's a true conspiracy is what I meant to say. All right, to where they're conspiring to hide the truth, where they're conspiring to paint the angels as uh, uh, the enemy when Esau is the real enemy. What the Lord is showing up to bring is judgment. All right, and, and uh, He's a righteous judge, but uh, but He's gonna be He's gonna be evil towards the wicked, meaning bad towards them. He's gonna be a terror to them. So to the wicked. Yeah, he's an enemy because he's righteous. All right. But they're going to try to paint him as an uh, adversary. They're going to try to point it at China or Russia or they, or America. Try to make it seem like they came up with some holographic type of technology to, to create a hologram of a drone. But um, there's no way to duplicate it, man, because um, I'm going I'm to do another lesson in a minute, a few minutes. Yahweh Ratazah dealing with Joe Rogan, where he stated that the, the chariots, they can go to the cat point, meaning point A to the cat point, from 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 point A where they're at, all the way to the next point, that you uh, um, kind of uh, already figured out where the, the military jets are about to go next. You know, already met them at that point where, where they got it written on their catalog where they're going to go to next on the map all right and the chariot would already shoot over to that area and show them like yo i could read what you got in your plane too like these angels man you know doing all type of things that defy physics known to man all right um so that's what esau is going to try to do they're going to try to paint the angels of, of yahweh and they're going to try to make yahweh shai's um, arrival Seem like ET or uh, uh, what they consider uh, aliens, you know. Um, what else? Uh, uh, military a a adversaries. So they they're using this opportunity to create what you would call their space force that they had a as their agenda ever since the nineteen seventies. They want a space force. All right. The to go out in space and that goes all the way back to the time of Nimrod. There's nothing new under the sun. They all want to reach space. Alright. So they want to set up a space force in what you would call the exosphere, which is sort of like the awning or the outer steps of the um the firmament. Alright. Okay, when you hear about Esau going to space, like the like the CEO of Amazon and uh, Virgin Records, Virgin Mobile. I mean, so like, uh, they went out there to space, but they came right back down. <laughs> Where did they go? They went into uh, uh, to the exosphere. They didn't go into real space. All right, because you know, as soon as they go past that exosphere, they're gonna get sucked up in the space vacuum. They'll be gone. Shoo ripped to pieces turned inside out all right so they went up to the exosphere all the way to the point where there's no gravity and then they came back down 
All right? They probably went a little under the exosphere, but they went all the way to the point where there's no gravity, and they came back. All right. Um, let me get a couple of scriptures dealing with these topics I was just talking about. All right, this is Obadiah one and three, the pride of thine heart. All right, um, the pride of thine heart have deceived thee. So they're the pride, their pride and their riches. They think that the government of America is, is God. You know, is the only power. But you know, it's, it's a power because it's a system that was put together. Is I can kick my foot and that's power, right? But what it's saying is, um, the way she put it, she was like, "Yeah, they, uh, is it something greater than our government?" I'm like, what the hell is wrong with these people? You know, have so many empires upon the earth, and you think there's nothing greater than man, than Esau, and it's already been proven. You know. It just show you the mindset of these sheeple, man. For her to think there's nothing greater than, they got to be forced into thinking that there's something greater than America. They fell for the okie doke. But Obadiah one and and three, the pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. So that's their dwelling, not only upon the earth, but damn near under the earth. All right. But instead, this nation of Edomites, these demons, devils, they've so. Um, uh, become wiser than Daniel, you know, and in their technology and their cunning ways, and and through riches gotten by deceit, and and the earth been given into their hands. So this is what they're doing with it. They want to go out into space, create a space force, but the, in order to capitalize on that space force and really um, get it uh, uh, going. Yeah, Trump in office. He's the one that signed it in the, in the play. We're going to create a space force. All right. Trump was in office just to sign everything into place, just like Obama. Obama got in office. He signed everything in place dealing with um, uh, the mark of the beast. All right. Them moving over to electronic based files and catalogs. And you remember that, that health plan that he set up? All that stuff is playing out now. They had Trump in office. What did he do? He set up the whole Space Force. And now they now for them to seal the deal with the Space Force, they got to get the people to agree because the taxpayers are the one paying for it. So they want to create a Space Force where the Navy, they get Navy pilots, and they're already out there. They got robots out there and everything with arms on them that can push another satellite and destroy it or laser beams. And they're about to uh, actually go on an attack out there, the first attack out of space. One of them wants to be the one to do it. Out in space, have a drone attack another drone or satellite, you know, uh, from another country. That can be a space war. It's, and Mike Pence came out about it. He said, space is now a new domain for war. That's all they worrying about. All right. Now, you had in the 1960s, they had a race to space. Who was going to get there first and plant their flag? Whoever does that, uh, they they rule that timing of going to space. You know, they say they did it first, so they got all rights to it. Da, 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 da. So what happened is uh, you had that whole fake uh, moon landing going on to where America was so desperate to make it look like they went to the moon first. Well, they went to space, but they didn't go to the moon. You know, I'm sure they went to space, but I don't believe they went to the moon. All right, because the moon, the moon is um uh, way out, what, 100,000 kilometers. It's been a while since I studied it, but it's way out past the uh, exosphere. And they can't, if they go past the exosphere, they're basically in going to get caught up in the space vacuum. The satellites, they dwell around the exosphere inside, all right? That's what they have the satellite set that you hear about. Billions and millions of satellites, like a bunch of space junk all around the Earth right now. Okay? Satellites with lasers on them, all kind of little crafts and shit. Drones. Different levels of it. That's what we're dealing with. 
and they got it in orbit around the Earth, just like um, Kim Jong Un over North Korea. He got a satellite that orbits over America every day, at least five times a day. And they said it's capable of dropping an EMP or a nuke out of it. All right. So they're weaponizing space. They, they, uh, you see over in Iraq, they have satellites that can, they can zap people. They can send a drone over there. and They won't even need a human. They have a drone and control it with the satellite. Just like Russia has missiles called the Avangard that they can control with the satellite and have it maneuver all over the Earth and run through nuclear fuel. I mean, it'll keep going until it hit its target all around the Earth or all over through America. It's zooming all around. That's spoken of in the scriptures as well. So their, their pride has deceived them, man, thinking that they can go into space, thinking that they can create this uh, space army and, and stop the Lord from taking his throne, you know, the earth, his footstool, I mean. So the pride of thine heart has deceived thee, the thou that dwellest in the crevice of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? All right, and they're saying that twofold. Spiritually, they're saying what nation is greater than them or who um who can stop this country that they've built up but look at the roman empire you know look at all the um the ancient kingdoms thou that though thou exalt thyself as the eagle as america's standard the eagle just like the roman empire they use the eagle all right it goes into the sky and it peers down on its prey and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. And America has been falling since the 1960s. Every time they try to go into space, the Lord right there. All right, 1960s, uh, the Lord brought them down. How? He started bringing them down spiritually. He raised up Abba Bivens. All right, and uh, Elder Yaquav and King Masha. And, uh, and so on and so on, all the way down to Apostle Zahar. And, and, you know, then you had the 80s, uh, the, the 90s, you know, I was born in the 80s. You had the 90s when I got the truth, and, you know. Then, uh, then you had the 2000s when a lot of brothers came into the truth and it really started teaching on the streets uh, through watching the apostles, the call, you know, to do the work. And then going into late in the 2020s, man, we almost out of here, man. All right, 2020. 2016, 2010, a lot of brothers started really flourishing. You've seen a lot of them coming into the truth. So this is it, man. The harvest is ripe. But at the same time, Esau tried to elevate themselves and go into space, man, in the 1960s. They were being proud. All right, the Roaring Twenties was their best time here in America. Of course, you had a depression, but they had 1930s. But it was a decade of nothing but prosperity in America, Babylon. When Esau was really thriving, they started pushing the uh, drop-top cars and shit, riding on the beach. People started driving more. All right, planes, uh, uh, people getting private jets. All type of fuel, uh, jet fuels and shit like that. They switch from different radar systems like uh, uh, um, radio wave. And then they went to lasers. And now they go on to this, uh, new towers and shit, you know, the 5G. So now they're going in outer space. And they're going to try to create this whole metropolis mindset. Hey, you get the chip. We'll take you out there with us. You get the chip, we'll take you into space. You get that, you know, they offer, what they offer and stuff. So when they when they went to set their nest among the stars, what that, their space stations that they set out there in their satellites in the 60s and 70s. All right, and at the same time, the Lord raised, started raising up his kingdom in the midst of this place, spiritually, through edification. Um, So now they're doing it again. They're going out to set up their military in space now. That's major, man. 
that's setting up for this. All right. This is um. Where is it at? Uh, uh, yeah, I get that one right after this. I didn't mean to get this, but I'm gonna get it. All right, Revelation 19 and uh, 12. No, 11. And I saw heaven open, and a, and behold, a white horse. That's talking about Yahweh Shai's chariot. And by white, it means sparkling and glowing. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Yahweh Shai, he riding upon a giant mountain-sized chariot. Came down upon Mount Sinai before, burnt the top of it. And you can read about it in Second Ezra chapter 13. All right, the war that he's going to fight when he shows up, when he gets past. When he, when he demolishes all their satellites and shit, they start to fall out of the sky like fig leaves, like, like figs, and you know, as the missiles raining down, well, Yahweh Shah later going to come down to the earth. And the bride going to be re, uh, re, uh, revealed after the Lord destroys their armies. All right? So he's coming out of the sky in a giant chariot, and he's going to go to war with all their armies. All the nation, all the all the nation's armies over there in the east, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was faithful and true, man. So he's faithful to the elect, and he's true. All right, they're trying to say it's a lie and trying to cover it up, and saying it's it's, it's Russia and China it's stuff that they created, advanced technology, <laughs> trying to create this uh, narrative. To point at an adversary. That's the point. They're trying to create people to get in that uh, adversary, ad adversarial state of mind to where they think there's an adversary out there. And the word adversary means Satan. When Esau's Satan, they're the adversary. All right. Um, and in righteousness, he do a judge and make war. See, he's not showing up for wickedness, he's showing up in righteousness. All right, that's his scepter, righteousness. And, and righteousness, he do a judge, man. He's going to give righteous judgment and, and make war. So it's going to be a war, all right, from heaven. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, right? Because Yahweh Shah destroyed all these kingdoms before, all right? And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of Yahweh. You can read about that in First John, who the Word is. All right, the Word was with the powers. That's talking about Yahweh Shah. And the armies, which were in heaven, so there's armies out there. The host of heaven, the armies. The Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord of armies. All right, you have the space force, the ground force, well, out there. You have the top archangels, the four archangels that are over different rankings of the heavenly armies. You have the Gabriel, angel Gabriel, Uriel, Uriel, whose name could be Jeremiah. You have Gabriel and you have uh, Raphael, Rapaya All right. So um, it says, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, man. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean, so they're glowing. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. So these ain't no damn aliens. There ain't no damn ET with or the extraterrestrials, but ETs with big bugged out eyes, demons and shit. No, these are angels, righteous, beautiful, glowing, angelic man. All right. And out of his mouth go off his sharp sword. So he's going to show up shooting laser beams at this place. Scare the hell out of everybody. Like on uh, War of the Worlds. And out of his mouth go off his sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations. All right? Because the Lord chose fire to be the tool for the instrument for judgment in these last days. From the heavens, through the World War Three, through the chariots, through Yahweh Shai. And through the men of the Lord, when the Lord said fire going to come out of their mouth and from out of the heavens. And in this manner shall men be uh, killed if they, uh, and, and killed deals with defense as well, self-defense. 
if they uh if they trespass against the men of the Lord. The Lord said fire even come out of heaven or or, or from their mouth. That like meaning from their front, like laser beam shooting out your hand type shit. Alright. Um and and he tread up the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty Yahweh. All right, so let me get this. All right, why not? Verse seventeen. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, "To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Yahweh." And this, these talking about real birds. The Lord gonna call all them damn birds. Over there, and they're gonna be feasting on these dead bodies. All right, that's the point. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of dead people, a lot of a lot of killed people, man. All right, the scriptures say the slain of the Lord shall be many. It says that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So that's gonna be the uh, the war in heaven and the war upon earth when the Lord sends his chariots alright and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies alright see the beast Esau the European Union NATO America and the kings of the earth so they all gonna come together uh, that was the plan of Ronald Reagan to create the new world order, one world military, one world religion, you know, one world banking. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. All right, so that was the spirit, man. I didn't even mean, didn't even mean to get this. But let me get to the uh, other scripture now. All right, go over to Revel Revelations 12. Uh, and seven. I don't need, know why I didn't write it down, but yeah, Revelation twelve and seven. And there was war in heaven. See, it's gonna be a war. The Lord gonna uh, they gonna have what's called space war. All right, and that's why they're creating this narrative saying adversaries, adversaries. You know, um, just so they can create a defense out in space. Now they can go into space and people are going to want it. You know? They're going to say, yeah, go out there and build, build for us. <laughs> and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels, so the Lord is going to send his angel Michael. That's, what, that's, who, that's who's over all the other angels. See that? They're going to follow him in white horses and chariots clothed in white linen. And his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels. That's major, because the Lord had his angels um moving in stealth mode, you know, for for a long time now. That's why since the seventies they've been keeping it hidden, but now all of a sudden they see the chariot showing up, and like, we have a great window of opportunity to create a new world order. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, they're running out of time. That's why they're coming down with great wrath. All right. Uh, and prevailed not. So the Lord going to fight against Esau and all his technology and, and his military and prevailed not. So they're going to lose the space war. It's going to be a war in heaven. All right. And I think I'm past my time. But let me uh finish it up. And prevailed not. Neither was there found any more found any more so like it neither was their place found any more in heaven so all the chair all the uh satellites their space stations their technology their air force all that's coming down it's gonna be a no-fly zone all right the lord gonna set up a no-fly zone with the chariots okay and and the great dragon was cast out yeah, the European Union, or Esau in general, the elites. That old serpent, so they're uh, called the devil, so they're the deceivers. And Satan, so they're the adversary. All right, the Lord showing us, like, they're the adversary, you know? 
they point at adversaries, but three point three fingers pointing back at their damn self. Which deceived the whole world, man. So they, they're gonna deceive the whole world into thinking that the Lord is it some green alien or something or space technology from China or Russia. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So that's going all the way back to the Roman Empire. They've been called the devil and Satan. The mystery of iniquity that was already working, that had to be revealed. Which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All right. And uh, so that, that's about to happen. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 20. His severe wrath shall he sharpen for his sword. <laughs> so he's going to sharpen that for his sword. And that's going to be your laser beams. Excuse me. And the wrath and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. So the Lord going to bring the, the fowls of the air, the birds. Yeah, he's going to send lightnings. He's going to send storms. All right. What is it? What will lie if it already be kindled? Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts go abroad, and from the as and from the clouds, as from a well drawn bow, shall they fly to their mark. So they're gonna be perfectly aimed shots that the chariot's gonna shoot. They ain't gonna be, and they gonna, they're not gonna miss. They're gonna time that shit perfect. Just zap somebody. Pew! You're going to be zapping, zapping people, you know, destroying their monuments, like uh, War of the Worlds, man, or Independence Day. All right, so the, the right aiming thunderbolts, that's talking about the chariot shooting out laser beams. And hailstones full of wrath shall be cast out. That was that, the missiles, as out of a stone bow. And the water of the sea shall rage against them as some tsunamis, and the flood shall cruelly drown them, all right? So, um, let me get this. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2. All right, because they, they're going to realize that it's not China, it's not Russia, it's not green aliens, it's not an Edomite man coming out the sky called Caesar Bourget. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled. See, they're going to be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. And salvation means to pull somebody out of the way of a trap. So that's what the Lord is showing up to do, to deliver his elect. All right. So they say that. I'm going to get that as well real fast. This is Isaiah 31 and 5. As birds flying. So they're going to be flying in the sky like birds, man. You're going to see a, a flock of birds. You know, they're going to be chariots. They're going to be in V formation or whatever formation they're going to be in. And they're going to have a leader at the front. Just like, like the birds. As birds flying, so will Yahweh of armies, the Lord of armies, defend Jerusalem. That's talking about New Jerusalem, the elect, wherever we're at in the world. Defending also, so he's going to defend. What is that? Fighting. He's going to be fighting, man. Also, he will deliver it. And passing over it, he will preserve it. So he's going to protect and fight at the same time, man. You know? All right. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for, man. So be prepared because they're going to try to paint the narrative of the chariots being the enemy. Of, you know, being Russia or something on point towards that just to create that adversary state of mind, you know, narrative. And then um, they might just throw that away and just keep that adversary topic. It's, a, it's an adversary, it's something that's against us, you know, so they can set up their space for us and people are going to say, yeah, let's do it. All right. And they're going to use the taxpayers money to do it. And, and, and uh, force people to pay for it. <laughs> so I'm going to end it there, man. And uh, but it's going to be the point, verse 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within, within. So it's going to be something within themselves. This was he whom we had sometime in derision 
in a proverb of reproach, talking about the prophets, right? That they didn't believe us. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. 